Hi, Chef Raphael here. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a delicious bibimbap. I'm actually doing this video in collaboration with Kotra and it's all about encouraging people or making people are aware about Korean food. On this video, I'll show you the, the basics about it. What I have here is different types of uh, vegetables and meat. On the base is rice, so that's the traditional way of, uh, of doing this dish. Watch till the end, you see how simple it is to make it. And I hope you learn something new. Let's get cooking. To make the cucumber, the first thing you want to do is to cut them into round pieces that are slightly thick, but make sure that they are the same size. And then after that, what you need to do is to make, which is optional, to make a little bit of scoring. Basically cut a little bit of um, lines on top of the cucumber just to make this, um, the next stage, which is salting, uh, for the salt to penetrate. It also gives a nice uh, appearance when the, with the finished food. This is optional. Now after that, put the cucumber on a bowl, put plenty of salt and let the salt and mix it. What will happen is that the salt will draw out the excess liquid in the cucumber, which what, what will happen after it's done, after about 10 minutes, you'll drain off that water and then rinse the cucumber and they'll be ready. The next step for the cucumber is to add a little bit of flavor. What I'm going to add is a little bit of the uh, Korean chili flakes, um, a little bit of honey, and it will add the flavor that I want. It already has salt, so this is just something to make it different. Uh, but um, even the honey is optional, but it's all, it's all up to you, depending on what you have. To make the carrots, what I did first is to cut them into julienne. Basically, you slice the cucumber and then cut them into thin sticks that are equal size. After that, I will add the, uh, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of the vinegar. The vinegar that I'm using is the plum vinegar. It's also Korean. Uh, you can use any vinegar that you have, to be honest. Um, just mix everything. If you can, you can actually smash the carrots a little bit, but again, that's optional. And also what I decided to do is to add a little bit of the Korean chili flakes as well to give it a little bit of that taste. Just leave them for about 10 to 15 minutes. They'll be ready to eat. Now to cook the bok choy, Again, you can use any other greens that you have. The most important thing is to make sure that the pan is hot. I'll add a little bit of onion um, to cook a little bit and then add the bok choy. Keep stirring until they are withered. Again, they don't take long. I'll add a little bit of salt and they are ready when they are a little bit, the green is still bright, but uh, they have withered, uh, they have wilted a little bit and they still have a firm crunchiness to the stem. To make the mushroom, all I need to do, I'm using um, oyster mushroom. To make oyster mushrooms, just first thing you want to do is to shred them, just pull them apart into uh, long pieces. And then I'll add a little bit of the soy sauce, of the Korean soy sauce. It's what I like about it, it's not too dark. The salt is not too much, so it's not very salty like the, the Japanese um, soy sauce. So just a little bit of that and also add a little bit of black pepper and now it will be ready to cook. Now to cook the mushroom, all you need is a hot surface. Now the hot, uh, the hot pan, a little bit of oil, I'm using a little bit of ginger oil. Instead of adding grated ginger, I'm adding ginger oil. Again, that's optional. If you have sesame, sesame seed oil, that would be even much preferable because that has a nice um, um, flavor and it's also very popular in um, Korea. If you can't get it, you can use regular oil. All you need to do is cook them on high heat until they are slightly brown on both sides um, and it shouldn't take anything longer than two minutes. It's a very quick uh, uh, um, meal to fix and just put them aside on a plate. To prepare the meat, the first thing you want to do is to slice the meat thinly um, and then Depending on the meat that you have, like the one that I have here is um, a fillet steak. It's usually a tender meat, but if you, uh, if, you, if you can't get that, try and find a meat that is tender. And when you're cutting, cut against the grain of the meat. And then I'll add again the soy sauce, uh, the Korean soy sauce, um, which again is not too salty. A little bit of ginger and garlic shredded, uh, grated, 
when it comes to cooking you want it to be cooked on a hot hot pan uh, i'm using the pan that i'm using the same one i've used to cook the other vegetables you can use a, a big pan i'm using a cast iron pan but whatever pan so long as it's wide just place the meat so that they don't um, and make sure they don't um, lie on top of each other and make sure that it browns on both sides so when the meat is cooked it doesn't take too long especially if it's thin is sliced it should take even a minute depending on how thick you cut it even a minute should be enough to cook on both sides the fillet steak is not a tough meat so it should cook very fast when it's ready just put them aside on the plate ready for serving and putting together to make the bibimbap sauce a little bit of vinegar and then to that I'll add a little bit of sugar if you have rice vinegar use rice vinegar a little bit of the sesame oil if you have what I have here is the garlic oil or the ginger oil and grated ginger and garlic and then a little bit of water so what is now left is to bring everything together We'll start with the bibimbap sauce that I've made. I like the taste, it has that nice sweet. Remember the sweetness is also optional. So I put a little bit on the rice and then start bringing everything together on the rice, on top of the rice. It's all about the color and the different textures. Cucumber and then the mushroom so like that and then what I'm trying to do here is to have the colors not come together like the green and the green here and all this is stuff that you'll actually eat using a chopstick then finally the meat this is beef filet, it's really soft so and I've cut it thinly like that so that just pick it up. And then finally the egg with the yolk on top, just like that. So this will actually act as a sauce, you know when it's a little bit runny it will act as a sauce. To the food and then you can always add a little more of the sauce as you're eating or even as a garnish just like that so the sauce will actually add the flavor and there you have it and then maybe a little bit of sesame seeds so there you have it a complete meal it's what i like about this dish um, is the fact that you have so many different aspects and you can actually make different vegetables. It doesn't have to be the specific ones that I've used, but the most important thing is having different portions of everything. Uh, a protein, if you don't like, um, if you don't take meat, you can add something vegetarian or vegan, like tofu, for example. Um, the pickled vegetables, um, uh, like the carrot, has a nice uh, taste to it. Again, it's something to consider. You don't have to fry everything, but then again, you can still fry all the vegetables and the meat and then most importantly the egg the egg should be um, with the runny yolk um, it's part of the whole picture of the, the dish but when it comes to eating you'll actually mix everything and then eat it with chopsticks now if you're not familiar with how to use chopsticks you can actually use a spoon and a, or a fork but i hope you've learned something new this has been bibimbap the base again is just plain rice uh, there is the long or short grain rice that they use that is a little bit sticky that may be easy to use when you're using chopsticks but the tip that i can give you is you see that sometimes you you cook rice and it ha it tends to stick together that would be perfect for this kind of a dish you do not want to use basmati rice for this uh, because basmati rice won't stick and you will have individual um, uh, grains in the month of october 2023 on the 13th we will have the K Food Fair. So come one, come all. It will be from two o'clock um, till around six, whereby we'll have uh, Korean chefs coming over and uh, cooking different meals that you can come and sample. Most importantly, 
it's all about learning about K food. This is a K food fair, Korean cuisine, and hope to see you then.